Hi everyone, Dr. J here, and in this video we're going to introduce the topic of gravity. Now gravity is a big subject and covers a whole range of topics and scales all the way from space exploration and planetary gravity uh, all the way down to very small scale gravity surveys. And of course in this class we're going to focus more on the small scale, but it is important to understand something about the large scale Earth's gravity field in order to understand what we're measuring at the small scale. At the very largest scale, you can, uh, you can treat the Earth as a layered uh, sphere, which would have a uniform gravity field everywhere. And in fact, the average gravity field on Earth is about 9.8 meters per second squared. But because of density variations and local variations in the amount of mass near the Earth's surface, you do have small variations. And when I say small, I'm talking about 5% or less uh, in the gravity field. You can see this global gravity anomaly from GRACE. GRACE is a satellite mission which is related to NASA, and they have measured the gravity anomaly um, all over the world uh, using satellites. And you can see if you look at this GIF that the gravity field is very closely related to topography. If you look over the land areas, you can see places that have mountain ranges tend to have higher gravity or, or the red color, and places where they have low elevation uh, tend to be lower gravity anomalies. You also see this at a more local scale. Here we're looking at the whole state of Missouri. This is from the USGS on the right. Um, this is a, a isostatic gravity anomaly map and you can see there's something going on here in the New Madrid region. And you also see you know, kind of a topography correlation, but there's also density variations that are causing gravity variations. So both density and topography. Even, and both of those are, of course, related to changing the amount of mass that's close to your measurement. At a very local scale, you might be looking at uh, locating a fault or locating an ore body or the extents of an ore body. And so you can use a, a very low, small scale or microgravity survey to find the fault location, to try to estimate the density of rock types on either side of a fault, to try to estimate the size of an ore body or um, things like that. There are different types of ways to measure gravity. Obviously, we've already seen you can measure gravity from space using satellites. These are very large scale instruments and have a resolution that is around uh, 300, well, several hundred kilometers. I think it's about 300 mile resolution for GRACE. Um, these are very large scale measurements. On the other hand, you can use relative gravimeters. These are what are commonly used in small scale gravity surveys to get measurements at specific points, and these are relative gravimeters. So you're not necessarily going to get a measure of absolute gravity very accurately using these instruments, but you can get relative measurements to a reference baseline uh, very accurately. And this is, of course, what we're concerned about typically in small-scale gravity surveys, right? So you're not necessarily trying to get the absolute net value of gravity at a location. You're trying to find what are the bounds of an ore body, where is a fault, and you're just looking at what's the relative change in gravity relative to some reference. There's also these uh, new type of gravimeter called a MEMS accelerometer. These are small electronic devices which can be found inside your cell phone, and they can also measure accelerations due to gravity. Uh, in fact, we might do that as part of the lab for gravity. Uh, so we'll talk more about that later. So I want to talk a little bit more about kind of large-scale Earth's gravity, uh, a few more details. Um, the first one is going back to Newton's gravitational uh, law of gravitational attraction. And you've all seen this in uh, high school physics or first year college physics. So we have the gravitational force between two bodies with masses is equal to capital G. Capital G is the gravitational constant. Times mass 1 times mass 2 divided by the square of the distance between mass 1 and mass 2. So Newton's law of universal gravitational attraction. All masses exert gravitational attraction on one another. It's just unless you're a very large mass, you don't have very strong gravitational attraction because capital G is a very small number. We can also go back to Newton's second law, which says that any force is equal to the mass of the object that it's working on times its acceleration. Or if you're able to accelerate some mass, a certain amount, then that is equal to the force that you've imposed on it. Now we can relate these two, we can set them equal to each other, um, force of gravity, and then just in general force. And then we can use this to think about the force of the Earth's 
or sorry, the Earth's gravitational attraction on us. So, and we're going to use that to calculate the gravitational acceleration. So I'm going to call this acceleration g for gravity acceleration, and then I'll call the mass 2 the mass of the Earth, and r2 will be the radius of the Earth, so the distance from the center of the Earth to the surface, which is basically the center of the Earth to us. Now the reason that this works is because of the fact that the Earth is almost a perfect sphere, and it's almost a layered, a uniformly layered medium. So we don't have like a big, huge mass on one side of the Earth versus the other side of the Earth or anything like that. And because of that is the case, the Earth is kind of like an onion with layers that are almost perfectly spherical. We can approximate the gravitational attraction of the Earth as being due to a point mass where all the mass of the Earth is concentrated as it, at its center. And you learned about this in college physics or maybe high school physics, where you learn that oftentimes masses, depending on the distance between them, can be treated as point sources. And this turns out that this is always true for a mass which is spherically symmetric um, and has uh, internally its mass is distributed spherically symmetrically. Um, so even, and that's even the case if you're touching, the two masses are touching one another, like we're touching the surface of the Earth. So what we're going to do now is relate these two expressions and see what the gravitational uh, acceleration is. So let's see, I'm going to come down here and I'll say that m times g. m here is the mass of a person, me or you, is equal to capital G times m times mass of the Earth. Mass of the Earth is uh, some large number divided by the radius of the Earth squared. Okay? Obviously, we've got mass on both sides, mass of you and me, so we'll cancel that out, and we're just left with g on this side. So our solution, then, is that little g, gravita gravitational acceleration, is equal to big G, gravity constant, times the mass of the Earth, divided by the square of the Earth's radius. Okay, great. So, and if we work out plug-in numbers for what those are for the Earth, we'll get about 9.8 meters per second squared. So to first order, the Earth's gravitational field is constant. However, as we've already seen, uh, there are variations, local small variations, and when I say small, I'm talking about 5% or less of the Earth's total gravity field. One of those variations is a latitudinal variation. So let's look at that. I'm going to leave this uh, equation on the board just for a second, because we'll need it in a minute. That's my attempt at drawing a perfect circle. And then I'll draw what is an exaggeration of the Earth. So, uh, again, that's an exaggeration, but you get the idea. The Earth is slightly flattened compared to a perfect sphere. Now, it's actually very close to a perfect sphere, um, but the poles are a little bit squished. The equator is a little bit uh, spread out compared to the perfect sphere. The reason for that is, of course, the Earth's rotation. So the Earth's rotation causes mass to be slightly redistributed like that. But that results in two things. One thing is that it results in a slight difference here a slight difference in the location of, or the distance from the center of the Earth to the north and south poles than the distance from the center of the Earth to the equator, uh, anywhere along the equator. And I'll draw the equator in right here. So because you're closer to the center of the Earth, would you expect the gravity force to be higher or lower? Well, let's look at our equation. So, and I will draw my little g back in. So little g. And I'm going to change this now to say approximately. Because as we said, to first order, the Earth is a sphere. But now we're talking about deviations from a sphere. So again, the approximation is pretty good, but off by maybe 5%, depending on where you are on the Earth. So again, we have gravitational acceleration is approximately capital G gravitational constant. That doesn't change. Mass of the Earth. That doesn't change, although you could say that, well, there's less mass in between you uh, at the poles than there is between you at the equator. 
sorry, between you and the center of the Earth at the poles versus the equator. There's less mass. Less mass would mean that G would go down, right? So M is smaller, G will be smaller. How about the radius? The radius of the Earth is uh, here, and you have to square it. So the radius, the distance from the center of the Earth to you at the North Pole, is actually smaller, uh, again, by around tens of kilometers, than the distance from the center of the Earth to you at the equator. And also notice that this distance is squared. So it turns out you actually have um, a higher gravitational acceleration at the North and South Poles. So you're farther away from the Earth's center, and because that is 1 over distance squared, the farther away you are from the center of the Earth, the smaller the gravitational acceleration will be. So you'll actually weigh more <laughs> at the North Pole than you weigh at the Earth's equator. The second effect is uh, from the Earth's rotation. So the Earth is rotating, and I'll draw an arrow here. Okay, so we're rotating, and as you know, again, from college physics or high school physics, when you're rotating um, around in a circle, there's going to be a centrifugal acceleration that's related to gravity keeping you from flying off into space. Uh, and that centripetal acceler or, sorry, centrifugal acceleration reduces the gravitational acceleration locally. So at the equator, you're traveling at around 1,000 kilometers per hour. Uh, sorry, 1,000 miles per hour, excuse me. And so that means that your gravitational attraction locally is going to be modified by this centrifugal uh, sorry, this centrifugal acceleration, <laughs> not force. So you do... So the gravitational acceleration locally at the Earth's equator is going to be modified by this centrifugal, centrifugal acceleration that you're experiencing just by rotating around the Earth. And so this is also contributing to a lower gravitational acceleration at the Earth's equator. Now, what's going to happen at the poles? At the poles, North and South Pole, the acceleration is zero, right? Because at the poles, you're not, you're just rotating, you're not uh, moving around in a circle. So here at the poles, the, the centrifugal acceleration is zero. So if I make a plot, a diagram, where I plot, um, I guess, centrifugal acceleration versus latitude, and let me acceleration up here, and then latitude, which I'll call phi. This is the Greek letter phi, and that's how we normally represent latitude. So for latitude 0, and then plus or minus 90, that's our variation in latitude. Latitude 0, that's at the equator, that's the maximum ex uh, centrifugal acceleration, so that'll be some number. And then it decreases and goes to 0 as you reach the poles. And so this is this combined with this distance effect that we talked about a second ago is the reason that there's a latitude dependence in your gravitational acceleration, your local gravitational acceleration. You're closer or farther, closer or farther to the center of the Earth, and you're moving in a circle or not, depending on where you are on the surface of the Earth. And so those things are going to modify the gravitational acceleration that you feel. Um, okay, so that's kind of big scale, and the book gives you the equation for the latitude dependence of gravity. Um, there's also more advanced equations than that that are used by... So now, as we think about uh, more local scale surveys, just keep in mind that this is kind of the big scale picture. The first order, you have a constant gravitational acceleration globally, because the Earth is almost a sphere. The second order, you have this latitude dependence, and then finally you have local variations, which are due to local variations in topography, density, elevation, all those things which are changing a little bit um, the local gravitational acceleration because of changing mass. So if you're right next to a mountain that's more mass, you'll have a slightly higher gravitational acceleration. Right next to a deep ocean trench that's less mass, you'll have a slightly lower gravitational acceleration. And how those all work together we'll talk about in more detail uh, later on. Alright, so that will wrap it up for this first video, and welcome to the Gravity Module, and I will see you in the next video.